This video was made in collaboration with the Avatar Wiki. If you'd like to learn more, check out the link in the description. The Life of Suyin Beifang Suyin Beifang is the founder and leader of Zhao Fu, the daughter of Taf Beifang, and the younger half-sister of Lin. She is a powerful metal bender as well as a skilled and nimble dancer. Su Yin is happily married to an architect named Batar, with whom she has five children. She considers family of utmost importance. Welcome to the Amagi. In today's video, we're going over the life of Su Yin Beifang. Before we begin, we publish a new video every day. So be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. Early Life Born in 126 AG, six years after her half-sister Lin, Su Yin also inherited the earthbending prowess of her mother, Toph Beifang, and eventually mastered the art and its subskills of metal bending and seismic sense. Having endured constant restriction during her own childhood, Toph gave Su Yin and Lin much more freedom, though she did not divulge to them their respective father's identities. However, Toph's carefree approach to raising the two led Lin and Su Yin to compete for her attention. Lin became a police officer, while Su Yin became a delinquent. At some point around 138 AG, a 12-year-old Su Yin became associated with members of the Terra Triad to Lin's disapproval. Eventually, in 142 AG, she was roped into aiding a robbery by driving the getaway car, only to be stopped by Lin. When her half-sister reprimanded her for involvement in the robbery, Su Yin said she was doing her friends a favor and began walking away. As Lin caught her with a metal cable, losing her cool, Su Yin cut the line by metal bending her wrist guard, which snapped back at Lin and scarred her face, much to Su Yin's shock. Afterward, the two sisters were brought before a distraught Toph, who expressed her anger at them both. Not wanting Su Yin to go to jail, Toph destroyed the police report and sent Su Yin to live with her grandparents. In 143 AG, around the age of 16, Su Yin went to travel the world. Her adventures included sailing on a pirate ship, joining a traveling circus, and living in a sandbender commune. Eventually, she decided to settle down and start a family, and bought a large plot of land where, with the help of her future husband Batar's architectural skills, she created the city of Zaofu. Su Yin went on to have four sons and a daughter. She later also took in an eight-year-old Kuvira, whose talents she nurtured. Su Yin came to see her protege as a daughter and recognized herself in the smart young woman, who, as a natural leader, quickly rose through the ranks. Taking up many hobbies, Su Yin also created a successful dance group. At some point after her retirement as police chief, Toph began visiting Su Yin often and during one such occasion reconciled with her daughter, though they were both disappointed that Lin refused their invitation to do the same. Family Reunion After harmonic convergence, Su Yin gave shelter to Varric, who was on the run from Republic City, and her daughter Opal gained airbending abilities. Learning that other airbenders were emerging, Su Yin sent a request to Avatar Korra to help train her daughter. Upon their arrival in the city, Team Avatar found Su Yin rehearsing with her dance troupe for a performance to be held the following month, although the latter quickly ended practice when she noticed the team's presence. Ai Wei quickly informed her that the Avatar had lied about how many people were in her group. To Su Yin's surprise and delight, Korra confessed that Lin had also come to Zhao Fu. When asked by the Avatar how she knew Lin, Su Yin revealed that the two were sisters, which Lin later clarified as half-sisters. Su Yin and the group ventured to the police airship from which Lin had not yet disembarked. She hoped for a simple hello out of her half-sister after being able to see her for the first time in nearly 30 years, but Lin bitterly asserted that she had nothing to say to her. Su Yin claimed that she had been trying to mend relations, to which Lin responded by accusing Su Yin of tearing the family apart, prompting Su Yin to counter that Lin had kept it that way. Desiring not to argue about the past, Su Yin decided to bring Korra's group to her estate to meet her family, beginning with her twin sons, Wei and Wing, who were in the process of playing a game they themselves had invented called Power Disc. When Wei scored on Wing, Su Yin congratulated the former before saying she was proud of both of them. She next led them to her son Huan, who made art through metal bending, and asked him to meet the Avatar's group and his aunt. Finally, Su Yin introduced them to an excited Opal, Though when Lin grew impatient to leave with the airbender, Su Yin described her half-sister as the woman apparently trying to abduct her. Afterward, she explained that the rest of the group was set up for their stay while insisting that Korra train Opal. 
A nervous Korra believed that Opal should get training at the Northern Air Temple, but Su Yin remained insistent, believing that it could be done right at home. The Avatar ultimately relented and tried to explain Lin's impatience by saying that four criminals were after the group. Su Yin assured them that there was plenty of security around before telling them to prepare for dinner, saying her chef would prepare an appetizing meal. Just as they started dinner, Su Yin's husband, Batar, alerted her that he and their eldest son, Batar Jr., would have to skip on eating with them due to a major breakthrough in the remodeling of a train station. Su Yin let her husband head off, not desiring to stand in the way of success. She subsequently expressed what a blessing it was to have five children, to which Lin remarked that their mother had said the same thing, but never really meant it. Su Yin later asked Korra about the search for the new airbenders, to which the Avatar answered by explaining that she had recently freed a group of them from the Earth Queen's possession. The metalbender promptly chastised the Queen, calling her a horrible woman who believed she could do whatever she wanted, and referring to the monarch's rule as outdated. She asked Korra what she thought about the monarchy, and after hearing that Korra had not thought much about it, Su Yin advised her to gain an understanding of it, due to the evolving world, which she believed was reason enough for the Queen to step aside. Lin responded by making a facetious comment about Su Yin's apparent expertise in global affairs, to which Su Yin challenged her sister to say what she wanted to say to her face. They were promptly interrupted by the arrival of Varric and Julie. Su Yin explained to the group that Varric was heading up the technology division. When Lin lashed out at her sister for harboring a criminal, Su Yin defended the industrialist by saying that he did not deserve to be imprisoned for the rest of his life and reasoned that her own chef was once a pirate, declaring that people could change. Lin coldly stated that her half-sister had not changed at all, and stormed out of the room. After dinner, Su Yin found Korra observing a model of Zhao Fu in her office, and explained why she built the city. Korra thanked her host for giving them a place to stay and apologized for Lin's behavior. When asked by Korra what had happened, the matriarch explained hers and Lin's difficult childhood and the many occupations she held before settling down. Though the Avatar commented that she had created the perfect life, Su Yin remarked that it would have been as such if Lin had been part of it, but she gave up any hope of reconciliation long ago. Korra attempted to mend the sister's rift by asking Opal to attempt to connect with her aunt, but she was rudely sent away. The following day at breakfast, Su Yin expressed her disapproval with her sister's behavior toward Opal. As Wei and Wing joined them for a quick bite before their power disc match, Su Yin asked if they were ready. After Korra rejected the twins' offer to join them for the game because she did not know metal bending, Su Yin was surprised that Lin did not teach her. Suggesting with a laugh that Lin would have been a bad teacher, the matriarch offered to teach Korra, something she eagerly accepted. With Bo Lin not so sure about his own desire to learn the art, Su Yin kept an offer open for him. She soon noticed the metal neck plating around her gown being pulled along with the rest of their dishes, and she ducked as the latter went toward Varric's magnetic suit. Later that morning, Su Yin led Korra to a courtyard where she kept pieces of meteorite, one of which she used as a demonstration of metal bending for her. After showing a few shapes, the metal bender gave the fragment to Korra. They soon noticed Bo Lin sneaking around to watch them, and Su Yin again offered to teach him, telling him that the only thing that could stop him from performing the act was his attitude. Bo Lin decided to just watch, and Su Yin turned her attention to Korra again, advising the avatar to focus on the pieces of earth within the metal. Once Korra completed the act, Su Yin congratulated her. The matriarch continued to watch as Korra continued to catch on to metal bending, complimenting her on being the first avatar to perform it. Bo Lin soon approached Su Yin and shyly asked her to train him as well, to which she happily agreed. At that moment, however, Lin confronted Su Yin about the incident that had led to their separation. Responding to Lin's claim that she let her mother throw her career away, she reminded her that Toph retired a year later as a hero, but Lin counterclaimed that what Su Yin had done left their mother ashamed to wear the badge. The matriarch claimed she was not perfect, but had changed and reconciled with Toph, telling her half-sister that she had the chance to do the same. When accused of having not changed, Su Yin said Lin was the one who had not done so. She was still a bitter loner who only cared about herself, and that was why Tenzin left her. No longer able to keep calm, Lin attacked Su Yin, and the latter decided to counterattack, sparking a full-fledged duel. As Lin had been awakened from just having had a session with Guo, unbeknownst to Su Yin, Su Yin steadily proved to have the edge over her older sister, easily dodging rocks and metal and at one point knocked over Lin with a meteorite fragment, but was unable to keep her half-sister down, although her full focus allowed her to dominate in the end, using metal walling to send Lin back several feet. 
Suyin angrily asked if Lin had vented completely, but when she refused to stand down, prepared to hurl a giant rock at her against Lin raising the metal stairs. At that point, Opal interfered, blowing their weapons away with airbending and demanding to know why they wanted to hurt each other. Soon after, Su Yin watched as her sibling passed out. Later, Su Yin and Batar were approached by Opal, and they each gave their daughter permission to travel to the Northern Air Temple and train with Tenzin. Su Yin soon approached Lin in front of a statue of Toph, believing she had a role in Opal's decision, and expressed her approval of Opal's honesty and desire for her to be happy. She lamented about having too much freedom from their mother, but giving her own daughter too little, wanting for her to choose her own way. The metal bender subsequently apologized for giving Lin a hard time when they were younger, unable to imagine her life without having been sent away, chuckling at her sibling's joke that she would be in prison. Su Yin also told Lin that Republic City was happy to have her and that their mother was proud of them too. She expressed her desire to move on and for Lin to join her life, hoping to have the kids joined by their aunt and a co-director for her dance troupe. Lin advised her to take things slowly, starting with a promise not to show up and attack her again. Su Yin agreed and shook her sister's hand. Sometime later, Su Yin hosted a farewell dinner for Opal. She expressed her pride in her daughter while complimenting her on being a good daughter, sister, and friend. She expressed her belief that Opal would become an airbending master. Su Yin kissed her on the side of her forehead before raising her glass to lead the toast. After dinner, Su Yin, her family, and their guests helped see her off as Opal departed in an airship. Red Lotus Attack That night, the estate was infiltrated by the Red Lotus, who sought to kidnap Korra. Hearing the ruckus, Su Yin, Wei, and Wing joined in the effort to surround them, covering them with metal panels, only for Gazan to divide the sides by turning the ground into a pool of lava. Su Yin and her sons were able to save Team Avatar and Lin from a combustion attack by Pali by shielding them with a metal panel before joining them behind another. Unsure as to how they got in, Su Yin declared they would not escape. She planned for her and Lin to descend from the dome on metal cables, telling Bo Lin he needed to disable Pali's third eye before the siblings dropped in. Su Yin, Lin, and the twins made their way to the dome's roof, warning Wei and Wing to metal bend them up in case of trouble. Upon getting the go, Su Yin and Lin dropped in. Bo Lin was able to land a pebble on Pali's third eye at the last second, blocking her chi and giving the half-sisters the opening they needed to rescue Korra. As they ascended, Sahir pursued on his glider, but Su Yin shot four arrows into it, causing their foe to fall to the ground which Lin thanked Su Yin for. After getting Korra safely to the roof, Su Yin called on the radio for her guards to search the estate. A short time later in her office, the matriarch was left unsure as to how the incident happened, calling the operation well-planned. At Korra's suggestion that one of the guards help them, Su Yin demanded they be questioned. The next morning, Su Yin watched as Ai Wei interrogated the guards on duty and even Varric. At Lin's suspicion, the metal bender agreed to be questioned declaring she had nothing to hide. She calmly stated she had nothing to do with the attack. Ai Wei determined she was telling the truth. The next guard in was Hong Li, whom Ai Wei found to be lying about not having any role. Su Yin threw the guard into the wall, demanding to know how they got in and out, as well as their whereabouts before calling him a traitor to the clan. Later that day, Su Yin and Lin made their way to Ai Wei's house after hearing an explosion. The matriarch asked where Ai Wei was, to which Korra and Mako told her of his betrayal of the clan, having allowed the Red Lotus entrance and exit through a secret passageway while lying about Hong Li and destroying any evidence of his presence. Su Yin was shocked as she had trusted Ai Wei. Regathering in her office, she recalled trusting the emissary with her life and thought they were all a family. When Lin and Korra argued over the Avatar's safety, Su Yin stated her agreement with her half-sister, assuring Korra that Ai Wei and his associates would be brought to justice. She told Team Avatar that her staff would prepare their airship for a morning departure. A short time later, however, Su Yin stopped by to visit the team again, asking Korra if Naga could track Ai Wei. After being given an affirmative response, she handed Korra the key to a fully loaded jeep, which they could use to find the traitor. She explained her agreement with Lin was just to let her half-sibling hear what she wanted to hear, instead being a ploy to buy them time to begin their search. The metal bender assured them that she would deal with Lin's wrath in the morning and embrace Korra before they left. The next morning, Su Yin was approached by Lin, who was wondering where Team Avatar was. Su Yin assured her Korra was fine and was waiting to hear word on if she had tracked down Ai Wei. An angered Lin accused her of stabbing her in the back, 
but Su Yin only replied by saying Lin could not control the Avatar's movements. She watched as her half-sibling walked away to decide to try. Stopping the Red Lotus Sometime later, Su Yin was noticed by Team Avatar that they were on their way back to Zhao Fu, and that she needed to try to get in contact with the Northern Air Temple to warn them of the Red Lotus' approach. She had her men continue to contact the temple while awaiting the arrival of the team's airship. She reported that they had not had any luck so far and voiced her worries about her daughter, prompting Lin to comfort her. Unable to keep waiting around, she announced that she would ready her airship, intending to travel toward the temple with a full force of the Metal Clan's security as a backup to take on the Red Lotus. On board the Zaofu airship bound for the Northern Air Temple, Su Yin suggested an ambush attack from the west, dropping in on metal cables and quickly defeating the lowlifes. Lin dismissed the plan because of the risk Pali posed, but Su Yin rebuffed her, asking if she had a better plan, to which she suggested dropping into the valley and catching them off guard by climbing up the mountain. Su Yin was skeptical as it would give the Red Lotus the high ground and Gazan the opportunity to melt them off the mountainside. When Korra stated any effort would be in vain because Zaheer would wipe out the airbenders upon sighting the team, Su Yin stated her sympathy with her because of the danger posed to Opal. At Korra suggesting she turn herself over, the matriarch told her they would give her whatever she needed. After learning of Zaheer's desire to meet Korra alone at Lahima's peak, Su Yin came up with a new plan. Aware that Zaheer did not know their strength in numbers, she suggested that Mako, Bolin, and Asami head to the air temple while she, Lin, Tanrak, and her metal benders would wait at the base of the peak. While Su Yin's group was slowly climbing the mountain, Mako radioed Lin to inform them of the Red Lotus double cross. The metal benders rapidly ascended and confronted Zaheer and Pali, the latter of whom moved to hold them off. Su Yin and Lin fired large slabs of rock at the combustion bender while dodging her dangerous attacks. However, the half-siblings were forced to take cover behind a large rock due to Pali's continuous strikes. Su Yin was told by Lin to take their foe out while she distracted her, much to the matriarch's dismay. Lin told her she loved her before initiating the plan. After her sister was knocked to the cliff's edge and Pali got ready to finish her off, Su Yin removed her armor and bent it around the combustion bender's head, causing Pali's blast to blow up in her face, killing her instantly. The Beifang sisters promptly swarmed in and surrounded Zaheer, Su Yin threatening him to surrender. When Zaheer intentionally slipped off the edge, they ran toward it, only to see the airbender floating in midair. Su Yin and Lin tried to capture him with metal cables, but the criminal flew away, much to their shock. The group reunited in a forest away from the temple with Kai having helped save Mako, Bolin, Asami, and Tenzin. When Mako told the group of Bolin's lava bending feet to get out of the collapsing structure, Su Yin expressed her faith in him, saying all he needed to do was believe in himself. She also told the rest of the group about his ability to fly. Kai subsequently told them about the location of the airbenders and probable location of Korra, a secret cave. With Ugi having arrived, the group had a means of transportation to reach the location in question. Kuvira told Su Yin she wanted to come along, but the latter told her and the guards to stay behind and help the wounded. Rescuing the Airbenders Kai led the group to the cave. Tenzin stayed behind and told them to find both the airbenders and his family, to which Su Yin assured him they would not come out without any of the captives. The group burst into the cave and disabled one of the Red Lotus sentries. Su Yin blocked an attack from the second sentry, allowing Asami to leap in and disable him with her electrified glove. She promptly rushed over to Opal and hugged her, though was pushed away by an eager Bolin, much to her annoyance. The metal bender subsequently helped in getting the captives out of the cave while Mako, Bolin, and Tanrak searched for Korra. After the airbenders saved Korra and threw Zaheer to the ground with a tornado, Su Yin and Lin quickly ensnared the criminal in an earth shell. The avatar, however, had been poisoned, severely weakening her and leaving her on the verge of death. Jinora told Su Yin the poison was metallic, prompting the metal bender to rush over and feel for the substance. She began bending up her body and was able to draw most of the liquid out, saving Korra. Two weeks later on Air Temple Island, Su Yin joined her half-sister, Tenzin and his family, Korra's parents, Lord Zuko, and President Raiko, watching as Asami brought out a debilitated Korra. She later attended Jinora's airbending mastery ceremony, smiling as Tenzin presented both the airbender and the avatar for their efforts in saving the Air Nation, and watched as Jinora's tattoos were revealed. Rift in the Ranks In the wake of Hu Ting's death, Su Yin was asked to help restore order in the Earth Kingdom, as she had the trust of the world leaders backing her up, and as a Beifong, 
had credibility in the Earth Kingdom. Although she was honored by the request, she declined, as she was not interested in imposing her ideals on an entire nation. As Kuvira argued that it would be an opportunity for Su Yin to share Zhao Fu's progressive ways, the Zhao Fu matriarch posed that marching an army down to Ba Sing Se would be met with nothing but war. Although her captain of the guard stressed that there were already wars and that this was an opportunity to change things, Su Yin's answer remained the same as she did not want to seize power for herself. Although she did not realize it at the time, her disagreement with Kuvira had led to a rift between the two women. After some time, Kuvira and Su Yin's eldest son, Batar Jr., as well as a large part of Zhao Fu's security force and some of the city's wealthiest citizens, decided to march to the Earth Kingdom capital and take on the task that Su Yin refused. Angered over the betrayal, Su Yin ordered them all to stay lest they would never be welcomed back. Despite the threat, Su Yin was left alone as they left. Batar Jr.'s leaving led to a falling out between him and Su Yin, who felt betrayed by him. Wu's Coronation Su Yin traveled to Republic City in order to attend Prince Wu's coronation as the new Earth King. As she was checking in to the Republic City Four Elements, she was greeted by her eldest son, whom she greeted in return as Batar Jr., which he dryly commented to just being Batar. When he gloated about his and Kuvira's accomplishments, Su Yin refuted his statements of them doing good as them conquering the Earth Kingdom. Although her son attempted to further enhance Kuvira's status, pointing to the fact that she would become an official member of the Beifong family through a marriage with him, Su Yin did not react to the announcement and merely pointed out that she was glad Kuvira was stepping down the following day due to Wu's coronation. Su Yin attended Wu's coronation and bore witness to Kuvira's declaration of usurping power in the Earth Kingdom, which she renamed the Earth Empire, although she was not impressed by the words. Afterward, she attended a meeting with the world leaders who let her talk to Kuvira as their representative. When Kuvira scolded her for having assumed a passive attitude when the Earth Kingdom crumbled after Hao Ting's death, Su Yin corrected her former captain of the guard by pointing out that she did not want to seize power for herself as Kuvira had done. She declared that it was necessary for the greater good that Kuvira step down as leader of the Earth Empire as she was just another tyrant. When she stated that she knew what happened to cities that denounced Kuvira's rule, she was warned about the fate that would befall Zhao Fu if she would not follow Kuvira. Protecting Zhao Fu Su Yin returned to Zhao Fu and after some time, a guard alerted her to the emergency that she had been expecting. Although her husband, Batar, stated he would contact President Raiko to receive help from the United Forces, Su Yin did not particularly see the point in that as Kuvira had already arrived with the full force of her army. Facilitating a meeting with Kuvira, Batar Jr. and Bolin, Su Yin made it clear to her former protege that she was not giving up her city regardless of the military pressure Kuvira had brought with her. She tried to reason with her son, saying that he must have realized that all he had done the past three years had gone directly against what she and Batar had tried to teach him. When Batar Jr. coldly refuted her, Su Yin wondered how he did not realize that he had been brainwashed by Kuvira. As tensions rose high and Bolin tried to defuse the situation, Su Yin angrily walked up to Kuvira, expressing her disbelief over the fact that the latter had attempted to use Bolin to sway them into surrendering the city. She ordered the military officers to leave, emphasizing that Zhao Fu would never accept Kuvira as its leader, though received the warning in return that she had 24 hours to agree to join the Earth Empire, lest the city would be taken by force. While she was conversing with the rest of her family, Su Yin was glad and relieved to find Korra entering her home. She promptly moved to embrace the Avatar and ask where she had been. Korra waved off the question to be answered at a later time and asked Su Yin how she could help in stopping Kuvira. The Zhao Fu matriarch took the avatar on a walk, during which she was asked how her relationship with Kuvira had gone sour. Su Yin briefly relayed her history with Kuvira from the start of their relationship until the betrayal three years prior. When Korra declared that she wanted to fix the situation, Su Yin stated that she needed to access the avatar state and destroy Kuvira's army in order to remove Kuvira from power. After Korra left to attempt reasoning with Kuvira, despite Su Yin's warning that there was no talking to her former protege, the Zhao Fu matriarch, together with Wei and Wing, sneaked out of the city to take care of the military threat themselves. Under the cover of darkness and completely clad in black, Su Yin took Wei and Wing into the woods surrounding Zhao Fu near the army's camp. After they took out a guard on patrol, Su Yin and the twins propelled up a tree with the aid of a metal cable. Overlooking the camp, she reassured Wing that their plan to take out Kuvira would work, despite the size of the army, 
considering that most soldiers had been forcefully enlisted and would have no reason to fight without their commander. Covering her face, she announced that it was time to end Kuvira's reign of terror, and the threesome infiltrated the camp, avoiding being detected by patrolling mecha suits and spotlights. After Suyin verified that Kuvira was alone in her tent by using seismic sense, they all tunneled their way into the army commander's quarters. The Zaofu matriarch used a metal cable to entangle and flip the sleeping woman, though was shocked to learn she had captured Zhu Li. When the sides of the tent fell back, they realized they had walked into a trap as they were surrounded and outnumbered by Kuvira's soldiers. Su Yin was chastised for being a coward by the army commander, who believed she had been afraid to step up to lead the Earth Kingdom, to join Kuvira when she became the leader, and to participate in a fair fight as opposed to a sneak attack. Su Yin and her sons were incapacitated by an electrical charge from a mecha suit and imprisoned in a metal contraption that prevented them from bending their way out. At dawn, the imprisoned Su Yin, Wei, and Wing were placed on the front line of the army by Kuvira during her negotiations with Korra, Opal, and Jinora. When Kuvira answered Opal's demand to release Su Yin and the twins by stating that she would not harm the Beifong clan if Su Yin agreed to bow to her, the Zaofu matriarch heatedly told her former protege that she would never do such a thing. She was forced to watch helplessly as Korra lost the battle for the fate of Zaofu, though when Opal intended on facing Korra's army in order to save her, Su Yin called out to her daughter that she should leave them behind, assuring her that they would be fine. Su Yin and her sons were afterward taken back to their city to serve as an example to the citizens as to what would befall them if they would not accept Kuvira's rule. Su Yin slanted her head and closed her eyes in defeat as her eldest son ordered Batar and Huan to be imprisoned for refusing to bow to Kuvira and urged everyone to hail the Great Uniter. Escaping Imprisonment Su Yin, together with the rest of her family, was moved to a cavern underneath Kuvira's factory near Zaofu. They were placed inside a wooden cell that was suspended with ropes over a seemingly bottomless chasm to prevent them from earthbending. As Toff, Lin, and Bo Lin created a makeshift tunnel toward the cave, Su Yin noticed their presence and alerted Batar of their imminent rescue. After Lin had swung all her sons through the air with her metal cables for Bo Lin to catch them, she tried to convince her acrophobic husband that everything would turn out all right, though with no success. After Lin swung Batar over the chasm against his will, causing him to scream out and alert the guards, Su Yin and Lin quickly exited the cell as well. Before they too could swing themselves to safety, however, a mecha suit attacked them, prompting Lin to sever two of the ropes suspending the cell and grab hold of Su Yin, letting the entire structure swing toward the other side of the chasm. Right before they would slam against the wall, the two sisters jumped inside the tunnel where the rest of their family was waiting for them. Su Yin warmly embraced her mother before they all made their way to the surface. Exiting the tunnel, Su Yin was delighted to be reunited with her daughter, whom she warmly embraced. Before they could all escape to safety, Opal and Bo Lin left to save Zhu Li, prompting Su Yin, Lin, Wei, and Wing to attempt to stop Kuvira and her spirit energy cannon themselves. Since Toph refused to fight with them, she asked her to keep an eye on Batar and Huan. The foursome left toward where Kuvira was testing the cannon in the presence of her troops, and just as the weapon fired its deadly beam at the abandoned town to which Opal and Bolin had traveled, they used their earthbending to rattle the piece of artillery, distorting the beam's trajectory and causing it to miss the town. Working with her sister and sons, Su Yin barraged Kuvira's soldiers with rocks and boulders. While the others continued to attack them, Su Yin sneaked toward the cannon and jumped on, launching a rock at Kuvira's head, who only narrowly avoided it by rolling out of the way. With Su Yin having fashioned herself a metal armor with one of the cover plates of the machine's engine, the two metal benders started to barrage at each other with small metal strips, each alternating between offensive and defensive maneuvers. The Zaofu matriarch managed to catch Kuvira off guard by bending one of the metal containers atop the cannon to her, though Kuvira disposed of it and retaliated by assaulting her with a blade she made out of metal bands over her left bicep. Only narrowly avoiding being struck, Su Yin used her agility to avoid the sword and intercepted one of Kuvira's thrusts, tossing her over the side of the cannon. Kuvira managed to hold on, however, and swung herself underneath the railing and into Su Yin, knocking her down. Su Yin was subsequently caught by the wrist with Kuvira's metal whip, smacked down, and propelled against the loading barrel of the cannon, before completely being launched off the machine altogether. Su Yin was immediately threatened by four soldiers, though Wei came to her rescue by catapulting them into the air. Grabbing hold of her son, they launched themselves into the air as well and managed to return to the safety of the defensive circle. The protective barrier was soon brought down by the advancing soldiers, however, 
and although Su Yin prepared to continue fighting, she found herself outnumbered and surrounded. Before the battle could proceed, they were saved by Toph, who shifted the earth underneath the feet of their aggressors, bringing them all down. As Opal returned on Juicy, Su Yin escaped to safety with the rest of her family, Bolin and Zhu Li. Touching down at a bamboo forest, Su Yin thanked Toph for coming to her rescue and was glad to see her and Lin reconcile their differences. She was shocked to learn, however, that Kuvira planned on attacking Republic City two weeks later. Defending Republic City Having returned to Republic City, Su Yin, Lin, Bolin, and Zhu Li immediately set course for City Hall, where they interrupted a meeting between President Raiko, Avatar Korra, Prince Wu, Mako, and Tenzin. As she entered, Su Yin was immediately hugged by Korra, who apologized for what had happened at Zaofu. Before she could explain how she had escaped her imprisonment, Bolin relayed a brief overview of the event, and Zhu Li announced that Kuvira planned to attack Republic City in two weeks. Afterward, Su Yin went to Air Temple Island, where she donned a typical Zhao Fu uniform. When Team Avatar informed everyone a week later that Kuvira's attack on the city would happen that day, Su Yin and her twin sons joined Asami, Bolin, and Mako at the Future Industries factory where Varric and Zhu Li were overseeing the manufacturing of the Hummingbird mecha suits. After Korra later brought Batar Jr. there as well after having kidnapped him with the help of an airbender stealth team, and failed to force him with physical threats to reveal the weaknesses of the enormous mecha suit that carried the spirit energy cannon, Su Yin requested to be allowed to talk to her son. Although Batar Jr. instantly dismissed her, she asked him why he was still siding with Kuvira, since he was no longer improving the world as he had originally set out to do. When Batar Jr. made it clear that he and Kuvira were willing to kill for their ultimate goal of a united Earth Empire, Su Yin apologized for whatever it was that she had done to hurt him and cause him to turn on them as he did. He revealed that he had broken her heart when he had left Sao Fu and that his departure had taken its toll on their family. She pleaded with him to return to them, though shed a tear when he dismissed her, declaring Kuvira to be his new family. Su Yin stepped back and let Korra talk to Batar Jr. again this time with more success. Su Yin was forced to run for her life, however, when Kuvira traced Batar Jr.'s radio call toward the factory and blew it up with her spirit energy cannon. Su Yin managed to survive the explosion and emerged from the rubble with everyone else when Bolin lifted a large piece of concrete, carrying an unconscious Batar Jr. together with Bumi. As the leaders of the group decided to face Kuvira and her army in an attempt to stop them, or at the very least slow them down, Su Yin was told by Korra to take all the wounded back to Asami's office. She placed her eldest son on a camp bed, and while Asami, Varric, and Zhu Li attempted to adapt the prototypes of the hummingbird mecha suits to get them airborne, never left his side. When he awoke in confusion, she emphasized that she was there and urged him to rest. As he apologized for betraying her and their family, Su Yin tried to ease his confusion in regards to Kuvira's actions against him by pointing out that she was a complicated person. When Batar Jr. lamented that Wei, Wing, and Opal would never forgive him, she comforted him by emphasizing that, while it might take some time, they would work to mend their broken bond as a family. When the others returned, Su Yin and Batar Jr. joined them in Asami's work office, where a new plan was formed. The benders would relentlessly attack the mecha suit to distract Kuvira and enable the two hummingbird mecha suits to land on the enormous machine and cut a hole in it without being crushed. As such, while standing atop a building and working together with Lin and Bolin, Su Yin severed the top stories of a large building and toppled it on Kuvira's mecha suit. While the machine was buried under the rubble, she used her metal cables to lower herself and Bolin back to the street, while Korra, Wei, and Wing were awaiting them. They were all shocked, however, to discover that the mecha suit uncovered itself without so much as a scratch. As Kuvira resumed her rampage, Su Yin saved her sister and twin sons from being crushed by debris by erecting an earth tent for cover. She was saddened to watch Hiroshi Sato be crushed to death by Kuvira upon completing his mission of cutting a hole in the suit's armor, though took on a hardened expression as she repelled atop the machine with her metal cables and dove inside the hole together with Lin, Bolin, Mako, and Korra. Inside, Su Yin was ordered by Korra to climb up the weaponized arm together with Lin and disable the spirit energy cannon. When Korra announced that she would take on Kuvira in the meantime, Su Yin asked if she was certain, referring to what had happened the last time they had faced each other. After Korra reassured her that it would go differently this time, Su Yin and Lin used their cables to quickly ascend toward the right arm of the machine. Upon arrival, they were immediately attacked by a guard who barraged them with metal strips. Su Yin briefly watched how her sister took on their assailant 
before turning to the cannon's loading mechanism and tearing down the chain connecting the spirit vine power cores with her bending, causing the capsule to explode within the arm. When Lin joined her and complimented her on the action, Su Yin noted that while the outside of the mecha suit was constructed out of platinum, the inside was metallic, making it vulnerable to their metal bending. The sisters worked together to cause as much damage as they could, effectively disabling the weapon and severing Kuvira's connection to the arm as a whole. Su Yin was knocked unconscious, however, when she was thrown against the metal wall as Kuvira ripped the arm off the suit and tossed it away. Lin saved them both from being flung free by bending the interior wall around them to strap them in. After they recovered, Su Yin and Lin made their way to the spirit wilds, which had been blasted open when Kuvira fired the spirit energy cannon from within the vegetation and now housed a new spirit portal. Realizing Korra and Kuvira were nowhere to be found, Su Yin and the rest of Team Avatar set out to search the area for the Avatar. She watched in surprise when the spirits emerged a few moments later from the spirit portal, followed by Korra and Kuvira. After Kuvira surrendered and apologized to her for everything she had put her and her family through, Su Yin sternly told her former protege that she would answer for everything she had done and helped Lin lead her away. Su Yin later attended Varric and Julie's wedding on Air Temple Island, sitting at the end of a row with Lin to her right, and smiled when the couple sealed their union with a kiss. During the dinner party, she sat at a table with her family. Gao Ling Crisis Su Yin was present for the beginning of Kuvira's trial three months after her defeat, along with her husband, Huan, Opal, Wei, Wing, and Team Avatar. She watched on as the Earth Empire's former leader was brought before a tribunal and saw Kuvira plead not guilty to her crimes. Su Yin was quick to confront Kuvira, telling her that the whole world knew what the Earth Empire did. Kuvira told her that Su Yin's family turned her backs on her long before the rise of the Earth Empire and that she had apologized for her actions numerous times. Su Yin told her that being sorry was not enough and that she needed to take responsibility for what she had done. Team Avatar later left with Wu and a temporarily released Kuvira to Gao Ling to promote the first free and fair elections in the state. After Mako, Bolin, and Asami were kidnapped and brainwashed, Kuvira radioed Su Yin for help. Su Yin asked what was happening as she heard that Asami was bringing Kuvira to Zaofu, and Kuvira told them that they were still in Gao Ling. Su Yin disbelieved Kuvira when she told her that Asami, Mako, and Bolin had been brainwashed, but Kuvira told her she had no one else to turn to for help. Su Yin brought Opal, Wei, and Wing on an airship to pick up Kuvira. Opal asked her mother why she did not send Metal Clan soldiers to pick her up, but Su Yin informed her that it was important she picked up Kuvira herself. Opal asked her mother how she could have a soft spot for Kuvira after all she had put their family through, but Su Yin simply told her it was not the right time to ask. When she met with Korra, Kuvira, Wu, and Toph, Su Yin was pleased to see her mother again, though Toph noted that she wished it would be under better circumstances. As Commander Guan's forces encroached on Su Yin's, Korra and Opal tried to capture Mako, Bolin, and Asami by stunning them with an airbending attack and having Su Yin, Wei, and Wing snag them with metal cables. However, Guan snapped the cables, and Su Yin ushered everyone onto the airship to escape. The party had only been able to retrieve a brainwashed Asami who was confined in a platinum pod designed for Kuvira. When Wing asked if Su Yin wanted to restrain Kuvira, she told the twins that she was not a flight risk, and Wei told his mother that he hoped she was right. Upon their arrival in Zaofu, Su Yin had Wei and Wing escort Opal to her room and had them call their medic, and ask Korra to take Asami inside. Noticing Kuvira's anxiety about meeting Batar Jr., she told her that she was going to have to face him sooner or later. Inside her estate, Su Yin spoke to Asami when she was released from her platinum pod, informing her that she would be confined to the estate. When the brainwashed businesswoman retorted that it was simply another way of being imprisoned, Su Yin denied her allegation but added she would be watched for her own safety as well as that of others. After Batar Jr.'s confrontation with Kuvira, Su Yin had Metal Clan guards escort the former Great Uniter to her quarters. Su Yin later joined her family, Korra and Kuvira, for a meal together. When Wei and Wing raised why the Metal Clan could not simply take down Guan's army in Gaoling, she told them that they could not be seen as aggressors, noting that the democratic movement could be thrown into turmoil should Zaofu interfere in another state's elections. Toph despaired at the already weak state of the movement, noting that Guan had likely brainwashed both the voters and the Earth King. Su Yin shut down Opal and Kuvira's argument over Guan's plan to brainwash Wu and reiterated that they needed to let the vote go forward and see it play out. Toph told her daughter not to get her hopes up, noting that she essentially forfeited the election as soon as they left Gao Ling, and believing Guan's victory to be almost certain. However, Batar Jr. entered, noting that if he could restore Asami's mind, 
then he could use the knowledge to free the brainwashed citizens. Kuvira and Su Yin added that Guan would lose all support once they realized what he did to them, leading to Toph's victory, which her mother sarcastically cheered. Su Yin later came to Asami's quarters and informed her and Korra that Batar Jr. was ready to begin the process. She was present through the multiple unsuccessful attempts to free Asami's mind. When Batar Jr. considered testing the process on a subject who had not been brainwashed, Su Yin cautioned Kuvira from it after she volunteered, but she was resolute to go ahead, stating that she was responsible for defeating Guan and the Earth Empire. After Batar Jr. had what he needed from Kuvira, Asami's brainwashing was successfully undone the next time they tried the process. However, Opal, Wei, and Wing rushed in, asking their mother to turn on the radio, as Guan had unexpectedly won the election by having Wu move up the election date. While Toph nonchalantly dismissed her loss, Su Yin told her it was not funny as Guan had outright stolen the election and used the Earth King to help him do it. President Moon planned to discuss the situation with Su Yin and the other world leaders. Su Yin later entered Korra and Asami's bedroom, informing them that the guards outside Kuvira's bedroom had been left unconscious, and she had stolen a metal clan plane and escaped Zhao Fu. As the three women moved outside the estate, she asked Korra if she had any ideas where Kuvira may have gone. The Avatar speculated that Kuvira was returning to Gao Ling, having been livid when Guan refused to surrender to her. Su Yin, Korra, Asami, and Toph flew to Gao Ling, guided by Opal on Juicy. Su Yin spotted Kuvira's plane with her telescope but could not see her. Opal asked her mother to admit that Kuvira had taken advantage of her goodwill and betrayed her again. Su Yin told her that they did not know for sure and that she would give Kuvira the benefit of the doubt until she learned otherwise, to Opal's chagrin. Her mother then told her to make a pass over the city so she could try to spot her. Su Yin spotted Kuvira at the re-education camp, noting that she was in trouble as a brainwashed Mako and Bolin began to attack her. Su Yin prepared to fight alongside her mother and daughter and disabled a mecha suit by wrapping its legs in metal cables. Su Yin found Kuvira levitating a sharp piece of metal ready to kill Guan, but advised her to stop, telling her that his death would not solve anything, nor would it give Kuvira peace. She accepted the truth of Su Yin's words and spared Guan's life while successfully getting him to surrender and have the Earth Empire army stand down. Su Yin was present outside Gaoling City Hall when Wu gave his speech proclaiming that the Earth Empire would need more time to move to democracy, with each state setting its own timetable according to the citizens' wishes. Su Yin and her family returned to Republic City once more when Kuvira's trial resumed. Su Yin was delighted when Kuvira confessed to all her charges, entering a guilty plea. As White Lotus sentries escorted her outside the courtroom, she approached Kuvira, apologizing, raising that she could have guided her along a different path were she a better mentor and mother. Kuvira told her that she should be the sorry one, and thanked Su Yin for taking her in and never abandoning her even at her worst. The two women embraced, Kuvira wishing they had more time. Su Yin told her that they would, as President Moon and the Tribunal agreed to release her into Su Yin's custody under house arrest for her remorse and actions in ending Guan and the Earth Empire. The Beifongs gathered around Kuvira, as Opal told her that despite not being born a Beifong, she would always be part of their family. Did you enjoy our video? Be sure to check out these other great videos from the Amagi, and make sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.